Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We are ending up our study of Hosea today. It doesn't mean we've covered it all, but we're going to we're going to end with chapter 14, and tomorrow we're going to begin with the study of the book of Joel. Uh, let's look at verse 1, Hosea 14. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Return is that wonderful word that deals with repentance. You're walking away from God. He now calls you to stop and to turn and to come back to Him. Take words with you and return to him say to him take away all our guilt there's your guilt offering that we talked about yesterday rudy take away our guilt accept that which is good and we will offer the fruit of our lips assyria our alliance with this foreign country will not save us we'll not ride on horses we'll not trust our our powerful army we will say no more our God to the work of our hands in the orphan uh, in you excuse me the orphan finds mercy it's interesting that they have social justice bound up in their in their repentance Rudy so why don't you comment on that for us please well it, you know it's the same comment that I have always about our thoughts and if you really think that you're a good person can you really say that you don't have any bad thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that you can. Right. And I think, you know, as we think about the guilt offering and Jesus' death being take, taken as a guilt offering for our iniquities, we have to realize that even though we may not find our thought process to be all that important, right. I think we have to understand how important God makes it. Yeah. And you never, you normally don't do things that you don't think about. I don't think you can do anything without thinking about it, but it's possible that maybe you could. Right. But 99.9% .9 of the time you think about it, mm -hmm. you ruminate about it, and then you do it because you're not, and the times that we don't wait on the Lord for that, basically are problems. Oh yeah. But I've never had more than probably 15 minutes go by that I didn't have a bad thought. And I hate that. Yeah. I hate yeah. that about myself. Yet, so I, I, okay, in my hating of this, I've cried to the Lord about it. Why does it have to be yeah. this way? And you come to realize that, that sometimes you're a vessel. Yeah. Well, all the times you're a vessel. But sometimes the evil one is dropping thoughts into your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why God wants you to be thinking about your thought universe. Yeah. Uh, I've tried to find the places that those bad thoughts came in. Right. And I discovered that on some degree, my mind universe is as big as the cosmos because I couldn't find, and you cannot find where it's being dropped in. Yeah. You know, one time uh, I was telling the Lord that this, this was just, what the, this process of being bombarded felt like I was shot, being shot with a shotgun. Yeah. And in my mind he showed me a colander and water is just coming out through all these holes, you know, and, and I said, you see, I told you. <laughs> yeah, wow. But his answer back to me was, look at how the colander stays full. Uh, I can be leaking through every hole in my body, yet he keeps me full. Come on, that's so good. Yeah. Well, don't worry about feeling like you've been shot by a shotgun. <laughs> the Lord's still in control. And yeah, we're going to get to that in a second because he, he's going to talk about that beautiful promise. Let me refer you to uh, verse 1 through 3 here. If you're looking for a really good picture of how to turn your life to God, here it is. You're walking away from God, doing your own will. You stop and you come back to Him. And when you come back to Him, you say, Dear God, verse 2, please take away my guilt. Lord, I accept what is good. I am, verse 3, I am no longer going to trust the things 
that I have trusted in the past. I'm no longer going to look at the things that I have created and say, they're my God. You know, I am going to, the very end of verse 3, I'm going to cooperate with you and take care of the different people that you put in my pathway. Uh, in this passage, it's the orphan, the widows, and the aliens are generally the ones that are spoken of. Lord, I'm coming to you. Try it out. And then God's answer is, verse 4, I'll heal you. I love you. Verse 7, they'll again live. They will flourish. And, and you know, I, th I love your picture, Rudy. The colander is leaking, but God's pouring his life into you. And uh, Well, that was a revelation. And, uh, uh, you know, it, the thing is, is that no matter what's going on, he keeps filling you. Praise God. Let's look at verse 9. This is the conclusion of Hosea. And we do well to conclude our study of Hosea by looking at verse 9. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. <clears throat> he's referring to the book, what he's been saying. Basically, he's been saying, don't try to blend your worship of God with other substitutes for God. Don't take God and blend him with American culture and call that Christianity. It's not. Let Jesus be Lord completely. Don't say, like I just quoted from verse 3, don't look at the work of your hands and say, that's my God. Don't do that. Take care of the vulnerable. Take care of them. And, and the list could go on. He says, if you understand these things and you know them, then, then, then walk in them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them. And then, unfortunately, transgressors stumble in them. Really, why don't you have the last comment on that and then pray for us. Uh, the last comment I have comes from <clears throat> a few verses in front of this, from verse 5. I will be like the dew to Israel. He right. shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive and his fragrance like Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah, who right. basically, uh, who is definitely speaking to Israel at exactly the time that four, chapter 14 uh, is being being penned by Hosea, and I and Isaiah is shown this from chapter 26, mm -hmm. uh, verse 19. Your dead shall live, their bodies shall yeah. rise. You who dwell in the dust, death wears your sting. Yeah. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sink for joy, for your dew is a light, is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Yeah. And that word of Isaiah was spoken at a time of hopelessness. Yes, and this one from Hosea is the same, and it, it's the end, but it's this do. And uh, even in the judges, there was this work of the do. There was do on a sheep's skin that Gideon wanted proof from God, and one day it was wet, the next day it was dry, and then God worked a miracle. Uh, the same thing's true for us. When we're moist with the Holy Spirit, we have a chance. You got it. When we're dry, we do Too not. Bad. You got to pray for us. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for uh, Hosea. Mm -hmm. That we can look back and see your grace, Father. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't look like grace. Sometimes it doesn't look like mercy. But, Father, I know that you so love the world. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, that everything is mercy and grace. Sure. Help us to wait for you, Father, in Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all for joining us in the study of Hosea. And we're going to start with Joel tomorrow. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.